Okay, so this is my 2016 Halloween maze that I'm making. Um, basics of it was, you know, I figured uh, you can uh, build stuff for cheaper than you can buy these flimsy junk animatronic props, you know, they're like uh, 150 $180 a piece and then they're just uh, like an animatronic head on a couple PVC pipes and it's just real junk so what I decided this is let me get back a little bit this is what I have so far you know the main sort of house entrance make it kind of look uh, scary and uh, you know I wanted to put um, you know it's not really well built but you know it's uh, sturdy and uh, by the time I paint it you know it's not gonna be pink and white and it should look pretty good now as far as safety um, of course being the absolute number one concern uh, you don't want anybody to be mad at you about anything so um, all anything that's accessible to be touched you know especially people wanting to run through here and kind of horse around and make it seem more exciting by you know playing a lot more afraid than they are um, because I don't really have anything that's jumping out just for liability purposes. I don't want anybody getting startled uh, as much fun as that is. But um, things like this, you know, everything's going to have to be sanded before I'm done with it, before I paint anything. And, uh, well, as far as this part, I'm not going to paint it all, but I'll have to sand it, sand it all down. But, um, yeah, everything is made out of, uh, let's see, I've got, well, on the front, I've just got these little thin, uh, one by half inch, 99 cent sticks is, you know, like decoration and the window and this little window up here, um, kind of just decorating the front with that make it three-dimensional um, as far as the frame it's all uh, two by threes which is about a dollar ninety eight a stick and um, the good thing about it is you know it's the st sturdiest wood that you can buy for the price so it's a good value and you know this thing you try and shake it and you know it's got to be as sturdy as possible you know uh, safety is the biggest concern so yeah the the most expensive part is like you know for a four by eight sheet of wood it's like um, about 14 bucks a piece and you gotta be buy about six of them for this structure um, it's quite expensive it's like uh, around 98 bucks um, the nice thing is uh, you know I just you can staple it onto the frame and it's, it's pretty solid and it's on there good but um, any part where you have seams like I don't know if you can see the seams right here um, if that's not reinforced on the back side uh, when water hits it it'll warp so that's something I'm going to have to do is go along the back side and put wood at every single one of these little spots and staple it down and then screw the wood into each post as well. So that's kind of a pain but um, for the most part it's been pretty easy. I've been working on this for mm, let's see three six about six days now. I built all this. As far as like securing it all together, mainly I've just been using uh, three inch wood screws and in some places uh, two inch wood screws. Um, right here, sometimes I'll use little brackets as well. 
but you know of course it's not a permanent structure it's just a temporary thing so um, the main thing is you know just make it as sturdy as possible um, and safe as possible as far as the maze is concerned uh, the reason why I went with this kind of like um, kind of large box frame structure is um, the idea is I decided that for the maze all I really need is to take um, 10 by 20 foot 10 by 25 foot um, drop cloth that's like a black drop cloth um, they're three mil and uh, you just I'm just gonna staple it to the top and the sides and uh, the insides were um, as walls and uh, runs about at Walmart it's like a nine bucks per roll so it's actually pretty cheap but it's gonna cost me about 40 bucks to uh, put drop cloth on everything um, also as far as these wood beams are concerned like anytime you're putting uh, wood beams above somebody's head because um, you know, if these actually dropped on somebody's head, which they're in there super solid, um, they're not going to drop on anything, but um, you have to believe that your your structure is good and solid and, you know, absolutely anything above the head you have to have complete confidence in. Yeah, that's right. I notice the cats think that I'm building something for them. They think it's their maze. Okay, so when I'm uh, using the table saw, one thing I try to do is line up with one eye, I close one eye, and then I try to line it, the blade right up there visually and uh, see how it's uh, the blade uh, is actually going to go on the outside of my cut because I don't want to go straight through the middle where I'll end up shortening uh, the length of stick that I'm actually trying to keep. Uh, so I'll go right to the outside and line it up visually like that and then I will take this little tool right here I'll go right up there and then just lock it down and then when I come along here it'll cut in the exact right spot as for just making straight uh, horizontal lines across the board to cut uh, say for a straight piece like that um, then you know this tool you just lock it down to uh, where it says 90 degrees and it makes a pretty straight line just like that I don't really have to do anything else to make straight cuts uh, another thing I do sometimes is I take I'll just take another little stick and uh, I'll check my angle by doing that make sure that it's actually straight Okay, so now I got my piece made and that's just going to fit on right there like that as the first piece for this. Okay, so one thing I, I do is I, I use these little sticks right here to um, kind of prop it up while I'm able to trace the angles onto the board that I'm cutting. Uh, the one thing I notice I... I always do is, you know, I'll take a pencil and actually trace the lines onto the wood, the angles that I'm going to cut. Uh, because if you just say, oh, this is a 45 degree angle and, and this and that, and you try and cut it at a certain angle, uh, you'll be surprised that, you know, the things you, you're building most of the time aren't actually that perfect to where you can just calculate an angle and be like, Oh, I'll just cut everything at 45 when when you're done you go put it together it's not gonna fit together so at least in my experience okay, so 
still have the basic outer frame on. I just went around and shirted it up and stapled the corners. So I can flip it over and then uh, finish stapling around the edge. Okay, so the other thing I like to do is uh, reinforce all of this with some little tack nails. Because honestly, uh, staples are pretty good, but uh, I don't know that they're that great at holding something together. So just use the corner. Probably use a regular hammer to do this, but just put in some tack nails, make sure. None of the little pieces fall off or whatever could happen. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, this is ready to go up on the building. It's the little window. Okay, so I'm ready to put in a little window frame up here. So let's see how it works out. Okay, so that's how that's looking so far. Focus it. Um, pretty good. Seems it's uh, starting to rain here. Let's see. There's that plane going over. Okay, anyways, I just wanted to show you how I organized my tools out here. Of course, I got all the wood piled up over there. But, um, this is kind of like stuff that I'm rarely using. And then, well, this is supposed to have the drill and everything. It's uh, up right there. And that drill, screws, things like that. And, uh, this is for pulling out nails and things like that. Um, and then, like, I just put these two buckets out and I'll use them, like, either as a table put the drill on or some screws or or some drill bits or something or also they're really good for just sitting on while you're working so you don't have to sit on the ground is it raining on you yes it is okay so once you start building these little box shapes uh, they're gonna go up to form the maze structure um, what I like to do is put some wood under there and get them up off the ground. Also, uh, as I build them, I'm just going to stack them right on top of each other so that they'll just keep raising up and, uh, until I'm done building them. Okay, also one thing I do when I'm sitting here drilling, um, I put this board under here uh, specifically because all these little air vents will just blow all this dirt right up into my face or uh, if nothing else, it's blowing it and getting it inside of here, and that's probably going to ruin this drill after a while. Okay, so this is my next set of walls all stacked up. I've got uh, three of them ready to go get tacked onto here and then put some uh, running boards across the top and extend the maze.